Good morning. Good afternoon. It is 12.50. We are just exiting uh, Coldwater Road here and about to pull up onto Larson Hill and then then the Smasher after we hit the Coquihalla Summit. Hammer down! This video is brought to you by uh, the Sutherland Group. Now hiring Super B Woodchip, Super B Flat Deck, Class 1 drivers in BC's Lower Mainland, the Okanagan, and the Kootenays. To apply, go to sutco.ca. Use promo code QUANFAT to make sure they know I sent you. Also, you get an extra 100 bucks on your first payday. Also, when you're applying for the job, make sure you use my name as a reference. Any referral bonuses I get thanks to that. I'll split it with you 50-50. Hard climb up Larson here. I've got the throttle all the way down. All the way. Little six cylinders working as hard as it can. Hammer down. There's going to be. We're going to see how the uh, bridge construction is going. Now that winter is kind of over, we're going into spring. I guess winter's not actually over, over, but we're definitely going into spring here. It's definitely spring, though. Like on the calendar, spring. Technically, legally, it's spring. Yeah. So I guess, if you guys watched last week's Friday video where I said, see you on Monday if I get home, if I make it, I did make it home. But I deemed it unsafe to keep continue driving. Because the battery issue was getting bad enough, not battery, electrical issue, was getting bad enough that, that well, you saw in the last video where I just go, what was that? Everything cut out. Well, the engine, power steering, lights, everything cut off. The engine just shut off. I, I lost all power. So from a safety standpoint, I don't want to have a full load coming down a mountain and that happen again. So I just said, get it into a shop, I don't care which shop. I'm not driving it until that, that has been solved. So they're going to look at it tomorrow. Hopefully resolve it tomorrow. I wish it was that easy, but I think look at it doesn't fix it. No. So we'll see if we even go to work this week. So we know we have today and tomorrow off. So we decided to go for a road trip. Just for the fun of it and for you guys. I mean, when you like driving, you like driving. On my days off, I'm like, well, I want to go drive still. Well, let's go drive then. Because we did it before trekking. We were just going trips. I was wondering if um, trucking would ruin my need to go on more trips. But five and a half, uh, five and a quarter years, eh, maybe almost five and a half years, five and a half years of trucking. I still, on my day off, I get antsy, you know, on vacation. What do we do on vacation? We spend a lot of vacation driving. Anytime I have time off, we go driving. We... So I still have that need for driving. I think trucking gets a lot of that urge out of me, but not, we don't get to hit the back roads. We don't get to hit yeah. the small roads. We yeah. don't get to take the roads I want to take. People ask, do you take the scenic route on purpose? No, 
I take the route my boss makes me to take. The, it's the shortage, shortish, short, shortest route we can legally take because he has to pay by the mile. So if we sometimes take a scenic route, it's because a border crossing, we had to take a certain border crossing for that type of load. If it wasn't for legal border crossings, we would take much shorter roads very often. But, yep. Um, if I'm oversized, though, we have to follow exact routing the permit gives us. So, my hands are quite tied on which routing I can take. I do try to record my video during the most interesting part of that day whenever possible, but some days are just less interesting than others and uh, <coughs> I'll be completely honest this is not a highway I would be on if I was doing this road trip just for myself I would have taken Highway 3 I guess if you're going to where we're going yeah. yep for the loop road trip I have, we have planned right now you guys will get tomorrow as well. I would not be on this highway. People always are, oh, how beautiful the Kokahala is. And I will always take Highway 3 or Highway 1 before taking the Kokahala. Except for today, I want to exact, that's why I'm taking this route, is to exactly prove why I would rather take Highway 1 over the Coquihalla. If you're coming through BC only once, you're only driving one direction, and you only get to choose one route, Coquihalla should not be all your first choice. Check tomorrow's video, and I guess maybe tomorrow and Wednesday's videos, to see the alternative route of Highway 1. I take um, Highway 3 quite often. That I would take that before the Coquihalla as well. So Highway 1 or Highway 3 would be my choices before this highway. Although this is an absolutely beautiful view, beautiful highway to take, I think the other routes are more beautiful. So we're gonna shoot Coquihalla here today down the Smasher. It's gorgeous. And then tomorrow, we're going to go north on Highway 1 from Yale up toward Hell's Canyon. The real highway through Hell. So it looks like they're doing a lot of crane work here at the bridges. Yeah, they're supposed to be doing the permanent fixes then. This is a temporary bridge that we're on here. I've never taken this side. We're always northbound on the Kukahala. So on the pickup, I chose to go southbound on the Coquihalla. And this is a temporary bridge here. So the flooding took these out, what, a year and a half ago now? Yeah, fall was a year and a half. Yeah. yeah. So they're making good progress on replacing those bridges. another bridge down here in a bit. Hmm? You hear something rattling on your side. Tippy tap. The keys? No, it's more like a tippy tap. I think it's a key. Oh, the window. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, uh, you hear vibrations. Oh, and on Friday's video where I said I keep hearing this rattle inside of my head, I figured out what it is. It was part of the electrical problem. All of my speakers were doing a staticky thing. And that's why it sounded like it was in my head. That would probably have drove me crazy. It was. I, 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 I was 
it, it was a weird it was it was an interesting feeling it was one of those ASMR feelings where stuff is in your head type of thing it's like I was talking about maybe doing an ASMR video and I think I've decided we don't have microphones good enough for that you need some really high quality microphones for that but we do have good enough microphones to perhaps do a like a gray noise but have engine noise for sleeping make it like an hour and a half long video however long the camera lasts maybe even do multiple videos and glue them together to make like a three hour video of all you hear is big rig driving sounds. Make sure the GPS doesn't talk, none of the radios talk, all that stuff is off, and then just have truck driving sound. Well, you'd better do that in a week I'm not around. When you're not around? Yeah, because I can't keep quiet for that long. Well, the women speaks the truth. Like that much noise, like no noise. No then, noise. Then I feel like I have to make noise. Mm -hmm. This rig does not have a speed limiter. Boogieing pretty good. Definitely over 105. So yeah, the bridge construction is making good progress. And they've upped the speed limits back on most of the Coca-Cola now. Where you can do 120 again. Yeah, I think that they're planning on keeping it that way. They might lower it maybe for Easter weekend or something. When you get a lot more traffic. I'm not sure. I will avoid this road on holiday weekends. Yeah, avoid Coquihalla on holidays, period. Three or one for sure on a holiday. This highway shut down so much during holidays. Like, I don't bet on things, but if you wanted to make like a bet on Coquihalla being closed on holiday, I would put money on it. Yep. Yep, you'd win that bet more often than not. Because the speed limit's 120, so that means everybody thinks they can do 170. Not everybody, there are people that think they can, especially on a long weekend. Treat this highway a little bit like an autobahn and just hammer down. Love my sunglasses. I brought mine for once. I have to order new glasses. So. Looks like we got reduced speed here. 100 kilometers. I know we're driving nice to snow, but it's kind of a springish day. 
get that spring vibe. Yeah. Need restroom at all? No, I'm good, thank you. Yep, definitely get a spring vibe out of this. <laughs> Excuse me. No frog. Yeah, we just ate in Merritt, so. Yeah, some of these people didn't read this reduced speed limit sign. Especially hauling an RV, so dangerous. That's a mini? It's a fairly big RV to be called a mini. Probably last time we were with our pickup. Yeah. We just don't take this highway southbound very often. The loads just don't work out that way. And you don't take it as much northbound as people think either. Well, if I go, if I'm on the Coquihalla, I shoot a video of it. But some of these truckers do it every day, really. Yes. Yeah. past the first rest area. I'm going to swing into this one just for a second and then this is exactly where the um, toll booths used to be. So you would slow down over here to go into the toll booth. Come to a stop, pay your toll of whatever it was, three bucks, five bucks, I can't remember. And then hammer down. I think it was still toll when I first moved here. I can't quite remember. It wasn't for very long. Lots of traffic, so let's time it out so we hit a gap. We continue. I do love this view. Which one's Coquihalla Mountain? I don't think either of them. I think it's farther. By the time I look it up, it'll be too late. Cell service up here, don't we? Yeah, it's just slow. Yeah, you go to satellite, right? And it doesn't load. There we go. So I think the one in front of us 
does the cook all amount? How do I get it to go? What direction that you're wanting to go? My Coquihalla is over there in this needle for peak. Maybe. Oh, so Coquihalla Mountain is to our left. Yeah. So on the other side, maybe that white mountain up there. It's kind of 45 degree angle to our left. So that would make sense. The Coquihalla Mountain is actually on the other side of the valley. That white peak on the other side there. Or it could be behind these peaks. One of yeah. those peaks there is the Coquihalla Mountain to the left. But one of these is the called Needle Peak. Needle Peak? On the, on the right hand side or left hand side of left those? Hand. So it'll be... One of these two here. So the one in front of us is Needle Peak, yep. Okay. And this one is called NAC, N-A-K. NAC, the one beside us, to our right. Yeah, I know so, it has two different names, but like NAC is the most common one. Yeah, but up in there are some really tall mountains. Yeah, so. up that, yeah, I don't know if you, you guys probably can't see to the left over there. There's some pretty big mountains in there. Um, that would be the Cobra Hollow Mountains. <clears throat> the summit, anyway, in there. Okay, remember, all the big rigs are going to pull over over up here, so we've got to be careful for rigs merging off and back on. Cobra Hollow Summit, right here. Elevation, 1,244 meters, 4,081 feet. And no, it's not that tall of a mountain. We have taller ones here in BC even, but this is the most famous one. In, most famous pass in Canada. I'm <laughs> trying to think, I'm like... Um... like it's got nothing like U.S. mountains or yeah. some of the, even the other mountains like... Uh, Kootenai Pass is the tallest pass in BC. Sure beats this one. This is usually considered the most dangerous one because this is the main route through the mountains, which means you have a lot of people that are on this highway for their very first time. And you get quite a bit of snow up here. And if it's your first time in a snowstorm, things go wrong. All the trucks merge out of that lane. So the car is like, oh, that lane is completely clear. No, they're all gonna merge back again. Just stay, that, that lane shouldn't even exist. <clears throat> they should make this just one lane through here and then. Well, I guess our outside camera is gone. We should have followed that car into that lane. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see how the outside camera survives the moisture, but I don't know if we were in the big rig, it'd be gone by now. I've, I've never used this outside camera mount before, so I literally stuck it on for the first time today morning. It's the first video that mount has shot, so. Three lanes down. Honestly, truckers should stay in the two right lanes and then we just stay in the left lane because the closing rate, closing rate's too great because they need to pass each other as well, so.
They're from Nova Verna, so they probably don't know the road as well. Someone's catching up with us, so I will move over a lane. Good job, Alberta. Here's the uh, bare snow shed. Alberta is not no. driving within their means. No, you're right. What road lines? Oh, you did pass the lion painting group. I don't think they'll get this far, but who knows? Line painting crew, yeah, yeah, they, they are painting. They are painting lines, so. Yeah, I think they paint this highway twice a year in spring and then again in fall. put so much sand and the ice around this highway with the amount of traffic this highway gets, the lines wear right off. Definitely a very different feeling going down the smasher in a four wheeler versus a big rig. Much faster. Much, much faster. <laughs> been pretty good this winter like there's they've done a good job of clearing this highway this winter it's they've mm -hmm. done with, with how much extra snowfall there's been I, I really think they've done a really good job we're still descending at quite a fast rate ear popping rate ear popping rate Accurate. if you're not used to elevation change this can actually be painful um, if, if you're a flatlander coming over here for the first time, get yourself a pack of gum from Banff all the way to Vancouver, or at least all the way to Hope. From Banff to Hope, have, have uh, gum ready for you because you're going to need it. There's a lot of ear popping. Uh, I mention it because people mention it. I, I never notice it anymore. If you live in the mountains, your body just naturally learns how to deal with it and you don't even think of ear popping. I bet you the locals that have lived here all their life don't even realize ear popping is a thing. Yeah. Equalizing the pressure inside your head versus the pressure outside of your head. Be long before I can look at waterfalls instead of avalanches. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of waterfalls here soon. Yeah, so it's a nice cool spring so far, so that means it'll be a slow melt. So far, it's a nice slow melt that'll reduce flooding risk. 
but we still have we still have time for that. Got like a month and a half. It's plus seven outside right now. Seven degrees, yeah, it's, it's all melting. Nice light load, all PVC piping, I think. flattens out a little. We're still losing out elevation but it flattens out a bit here before we have one more drop in elevation and then we drive right along the uh, Coquihalla River. These rocks are all wet. Yep, rocks are all sweating. Because they're working out so hard that's why they're rock hard. Okay. I was like a funny but cheesy dancer. That's why they're sweating so much. And a lot of truckers go, hey, we've made it down the steep section and grab a bunch of gears here and start speeding up. And then go, oh shoot. Here's another descent. I wasn't ready for this descent. And then they overheat their brakes and you see every couple of years there's a trucker that burns down at the bottom of this hill. Trucker or RV. There's a waterfall. Yeah, because you kind of don't realize how long the descent is. Yep. You keep descending and descending and descending. Another waterfall. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Lots of little waterfalls. I saw two bigger ones. They're kind of in the rock. There's one there. Yeah, lots of waterfalls. See, that's the thing. If you drive faster, you have to sit on your brakes the whole time. I haven't touched my brakes. Other than when we caught up with Alberta there. I haven't touched my brakes. Drive a little slower. That way you don't have to ride your brakes all the way down. I mean, I'm still doing a little over the speed limit. I'm driving plenty fast. I think another thing you do that most people don't is you look so far ahead. Mm, yeah, I guess so. That you can switch lanes a lot. I have the skill of looking around the corner. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm looking around the corner, but I'm using the GPS as aid. <laughs> I find it a lot harder to drive without a GPS. I can't drive without a GPS. It sucks. You drive with a GPS. You're, you're not allowed to drive with a GPS. Because the GPS aids you with, you know how sharp the next corner is after this corner. 
that that's mostly what I use GPS for is next corner looks this sharp okay this is the speed I should be going in a big rig that Mac makes a big difference in a car not really all that important but in a big rig huge difference so NBC I don't know about the rest of Canada driver the L or N no electronic devices includes a GPS mm. once you get your full license you can use a GPS again so any learners and any new drivers if you're a new driver for at least two years yeah, yeah. so for at least three years of driving Learners, you can do half a year, right? Half a year? If you take driving school. Okay, but let's just say a year for most people. So, two and a half to three years of your first driving experience, you're not allowed to use GPS. Well, what if they're built into the dash? I, I don't know. I'm sure people use them, but if you get caught, and they can be blamed as a ticket. So. Yeah. I see the pros and the cons to that. Yeah, yeah. I see cons to that. I mean, you don't want people using it. Set up your GPS where you're going while you're stopped, parked, and then don't touch it again. Just have it there as an aid. It's all that teaching you how to drive without, without one, right? Like, you have to learn how to navigate, to how to plan ahead. And watch your speed and stuff. It says 70 on the side there. Is our actual speed limit 70 here? Because the last speed limit was 90. 70 just to merge on? Or it's way off to the side, so... This is... Bridge replacement work and pipeline work. Bridge replacement on the right, pipeline work on the left. This bridge is still safe to drive on, but it is compromised, so they have to replace it. Now the pipeline has moved over to the right as well. Just look at the angle that some of those caterpillars are. That goes. I couldn't work like that. Yeah, there's some steep, steep hills they're working on. No, we saw some up in Golden. Their construction is. Those are crazy angles that they're working on. We're down on the Coquihalla River here now. Get to cross the river at least one more time. I believe all the rest of the construction zones are all pipeline. We're still losing elevation, but a lot slower now.
I guess that's another thing what people get concerned on the Kokala is how long you are descending or how long you're climbing. You spend a long time doing that climb. So if you're not used to the fact that your brakes don't last that long, your brakes need a chance to cool off in a descent that long. People that ride their brakes the whole way down end up burning their vehicles at the bottom. Somebody merged too late, like I did. I merged, I merged right at the last second, but there's nobody behind us, so I can afford to merge at the last second. that's open yet. Probably not. Since the flooding, a lot of Othello trails got destroyed, so... The angles they work at. Yeah, they work at some pretty steep angles. Kogahala River is fairly low. The water color is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, it'll probably turn like a mucky color with the runoff. As the runoff gets a little more aggressive, it's going to get very brown looking as all the erosion takes place. But right now, it's still calm enough that it's just beautiful, clear, turquoise blue. In the sun, it's like a bright turquoise blue in the shade it's like a dark green. Yeah. Well, I still have sunglasses on so it's a bit different than what you see. Well now we get to do the rock cut and that's it for the Coquihalla so I just want to say a huge thank you for everybody that supports us. Everybody that has hit that join button and get gets a bonus video every single weekend. You guys want to just support me for without watching anything extra you can do that too just hit the join button down below or consider giving me a super thanks that's always super super helpful as well so. yeah that looks like that most of that road is still closed on that side it's, it's a temporary road it's crazy And of course, you guys don't have to hit any of those buttons, you can just thank you for watching.
appreciate you guys watching to the end. A uh, little different today with a pickup. Tomorrow and Wednesday will be a little different. I don't know if, if we'll be back to work, when we'll be back to work. I suspect not till Thursday, but we'll see. We'll see. But as a rule, anytime I take the Coca Cola, I shoot a video here. So if that's all you're here for, to watch some of the real Coca Cola video, this is called the Rock Cut here. Um, then um, hit that subscribe button and look for a title with Highway Through Hell or Coca Cola listed in it. Actually, I do a separate playlist for just all the Coca Cola videos. If you go click on playlist, find Highway Through Hell, you can just watch every single Coca Cola video I've shot. So. The one in the snowstorm is one of my favorites. Close to the edge. He is very close to the edge. That's it. We are officially off the Coquihalla and on the Highway 3. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're out of here. You guys rock. Adios.